I'm Alan Kenny, Editorial Director with REIT.com, and we're at the Win Las Vegas for REIT World 2015, NAREIT's annual convention for all things REIT. I'm joined by Tim Riddio, professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Tim, you've done some research recently on the relationship between uh, REITs and uh, REIT capital structures and the value of the firms. Uh, you know, what motivated that study? Well, I think what motivated it was the, um, I, th I think, a general a, not enough appreciation for the value of financial management with uh, REITs. Um, the, uh, uh, the role of leverage, the role of the kind of debt that a firm uses. Um, we, we, kn we knew from previous work, or I knew from previous work, had first order effects on firm value. Um, yet, uh, and I think during the financial crisis, there was a renewed appreciation for uh, financial management, managing the balance sheet, but um, nonetheless we felt like we needed to do a longer term study to demonstrate some of the value effects uh, that are out there and we, and we found um, indeed that, the, that there was um, uh, very significant effects in terms of the relationship between leverage and firm value. All right, so you just mentioned it, but what are the, uh, those effects? What were your conclusions? Well, what we find is, is that uh, if you sort firms um, by their market-to-book ratio based on the assets that they own, not, not the equity, but the assets, so that's before leverage, um, what we find is, is that a 15% increase in leverage translates into a 50% increase in market-to-book. The firm's valued 50% higher relative to its book value than it would be um, uh, with, uh, with higher leverage levels, just 15% higher leverage levels. Uh, when we do more sophisticated statistical analysis when we control for um, uh, time of year, quarter, also for firms, so we look at within the firm. Within a particular firm, on average, we find that a 10% increase in leverage translates into a 10% decrease in the value of the firm. That's big effect. Uh, something that you don't see with general industrial firms. So the bottom line is, is that uh, uh, leverage really matters with these firms. We go further and uh, look at the effects of uh, corporate unsecured debt versus mortgage debt. Uh, and, uh, and we find that, that unsecured debt or unsecured corporate debt is better than mortgage debt, typically. And the reason we think that that's the case, it creates more value, is because with the bond covenants that go with unsecured debt, that, that creates commitment on the part of management to maintain low leverage levels. And shareholders seem to like that. And these studies always raise new questions. What uh, do you think we need to look at next? Well, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, I, think, I think continuing to dig deeper uh, uh, in terms of the nuances, the fine points of capital structure for REITs would be, uh, would be a good thing to do and, and look at, uh, so for example, look at maturity, maturity schedules, uh, look at adjustable rate debt versus fixed rate debt. Those kinds of things uh, are part of the financing decision and financial management. And also look more carefully at the interaction between financing and investment decisions uh, to understand, you know, what kinds of financing leads to better or worse investment? What kinds of investment leads to better or worse financing? Thanks so much for your time, Tim. You're very welcome. Be sure to visit REIT.com for more from REIT World 2015.